A public hearing today on the possible closure of J.B. Young ahead of tonight's Davenport School Board meeting. Plus, a look at the latest poll numbers for Republican presidential candidates ahead of two QC campaign stops this week. WHBF is local for you. This is Local 4 News This Morning. Good Monday morning. Thanks for watching Local 4 News This Morning. I'm Chris Langlois. And I'm Emily Scarlett. Neighbors are speaking out on both sides of the fence as the Davenport School District looks at closing J.B. Young Intermediate School. With a public hearing scheduled for tonight, Local 4's Greta Patrick shows us what residents are saying about J.B. Young's value to the neighborhood. Thomas Jones lives near J.B. Young, but decided not to send his kids there. We hear a lot of stuff about it. We know that um, that there's a lot of trouble in the school, that there's a lot of fighting and things like that. And um, it's more, it's just from what we heard, just not necessarily the best school in Davenport to send your kids to. If closed, J.B. Young students would be split up to attend other elementary schools in Davenport. If they're just sending all these kids out to different schools then I guess it could be a good idea to kind of separate them and give them a little bit better attention at different schools and stuff. Many parents are upset about the proposal to close J.B. Young. Another neighbor, Scott Searle, agrees with them. I believe that it should stay open. The school gets a bad rap and the school district wants to close that school because it's, it's a problem school. The school board says enrollment is low and it would take $11 million to update J.B. Young. But Scott thinks it's a needed facility. I, I believe that the decline in our neighborhood would uh, increase without a a neighborhood school and also you have to also think of the safety and the welfare of the children. The Davenport School Board will vote on whether or not to close J.B. Young at the end of October and if they vote to close it this will be its last academic year ending in May. Greta Patrick, Local 4 News. Thanks Greta. One person is dead after a three vehicle crash in Carbon Cliff, Illinois. It all happened at the intersection of Kelowna Road and 2nd Avenue South just after 7 Saturday evening. The Rock Island County Sheriff's Department says two vans going opposite ways on Kelowna Road collided and another car that was stopped at the traffic light at the intersection was hit by the two cars. All of the drivers involved were taken to the Illini Hospital where a passenger in one of the vans was pronounced dead. No names are being released at this time. A Muscatine man has been handed a prison sentence for multiple burglaries and theft charges. Friday, the Muscatine County District Court sentenced 50-year-old Marty Stambro to 30 years behind bars. Stambro pleaded guilty to five counts of third-degree burglary. He was also sentenced to 15 years in another unrelated theft case. On top of the prison time, the Muscatine County Attorney's Office says Stambro will have to pay victim restitution for numerous other burglaries he said to have committed. The Quad Cities will have no shortage of politicians to meet over the next week. Two presidential candidates will be making stops in our area. Republican presidential candidate Rand Paul will be attending the St. Ambrose University Students for Rand rally. That's tomorrow at the Rogalski Center just before 9 o'clock. And Republican presidential candidate Bobby Jindal will make a stop in Bettendorf this Thursday. The Louisiana governor is planning to visit the new Ross's Diner location at noon. A new CBS News poll shows Donald Trump continues to lead in the race to become the Republican nominee for president. 27% of Republican primary voters showing support to Trump, giving him a six-point lead over his closest competitor. That's neurosurgeon Ben Carson at 21%. The rest of the Republican field seeing single digits with Texas Senator Ted Cruz inching up to third place with 9%, followed by Florida Senator Marco Rubio with 8%. Carly Fiorina and Jeb Bush follow at 6% each. Mike Huckabee has also slipped considerably since the summer from 8% in August to just 2%. A lot of movement there. Two Rivers YMCA will break ground on a $3.4 million renovation and expansion project. That's this morning in Moline. The project will include the addition of a two-story children's adventure center, a new pre-K classroom, and a complete remodel of the South Lobby Welcome Center. The facility has seen a significant 20% growth since the year 2010. Families that joins the Y uh, right now is on some sort of income adjusted membership. And, and then along with that, we've seen a growing diversity of social, economic, um, ethnic, religious, and, uh, and income based um, families that, that come through this facility. And, you know, the Y is really, uh, as an organization, structured to, uh, to meet those needs much more so than, than many of the other organizations around. 
Leadership with the Y says the recent growth is a result of income-based membership pricing that removes barriers for involvement, and the expansion will allow Two Rivers to continue supporting community involvement so that people of all income levels have the opportunity to learn, grow, and thrive at the Y. Today's groundbreaking ceremony begins at 11 a.m. Hundreds of runners hit the streets in the Windy City for the Chicago Marathon this weekend. Training for a 26.2 mile run is never easy, but one local woman overcame some big odds to take part. Local Forest Krista Burris has more on one participant's tough experience leading up to a tough race. Rhonda Gable was riding her bike outside of Eldridge when a car hit her at 55 miles per hour. She hit her head so hard on the asphalt that her helmet cracked, and Rhonda still doesn't know who did it because the driver didn't stop. The first two things that went through my mind were how can you hit somebody and not stop? And the second thing was how bad are my injuries? I have a marathon in six weeks. Rhonda Gable has run in many marathons before, including Boston, New York, and the Quad City Marathon. For every race, she usually trains three months out by biking, running, and lifting weights. But one of her rides took a turn for the worst when she was knocked off her bike in a hit and run accident. Rhonda says at first she was angry and bitter because many people in Eldridge know her because of her daily runs and rides. That person that hit me probably has seen me before and has probably seen me after the accident on multiple times and to think that how do you how do you do that to somebody and not stop? But Rhonda wasn't going to let the accident stop her. Her marathon spirit is what keeps her going. She says her parents taught her hard work and determination at a young age. Rhonda hopes others learn from what she's been through. If they can see what I've survived and it can help somebody else push through a difficult situation, then um, it's, it's worth it. The marathon runner wasn't trying to beat her personal best in Chicago. She just wanted to make it through. I just, I have told myself over and over again that when it gets to be hard on Sunday, that I just have to think back to August 28th and how lucky I am to, um, to be part of it. Rhonda says she did well today, finishing at three hours and 52 minutes. The runner also says she doesn't have any hard feelings toward the person who hit her. She just wishes they would come clean about what they did. Krista Burris, Local 4 News this morning. Thanks, Krista. Such an inspiring story. And if that doesn't teach folks to get those helmets on, then I don't know what will. Yeah, that's right. And also, if you think you can't do something, I mean, that story there just proves that if you put your mind to it, uh, literally nothing can stop you if, if you want it that badly. So congrats to her. Very inspiring there. Definitely. All right, let's check in with meteorologist Anthony Peoples. We've missed you, Anthony. You've been gone for a while. Yeah, almost two weeks. It was nice to get away. I've spent a few days in San Francisco, a few more days in Anchorage, Alaska, but it's good to be home. Yeah, well, certainly uh, we're definitely glad to have you back. A lot of people uh, Facebooking us saying they, they miss you and everything, so certainly glad to have the team all reunited here again. Yes, it's good to be back in the uh, saddle, I guess you should say. Good to be back. Uh, as we take a look at downtown Davenport, you can see the lights are bright. Notice I'm not showing you the sky because it's still so dark at this hour that the uh, sun doesn't arrive until after 7 o'clock this morning. So out there right now, a little on the breezy side, but it will become blustery this afternoon. Right now, west winds at 9 in Moline, 64 degrees. Davenport already down to 60 with west winds at 7, but those winds are really going to start to pick up as we go through the day today. We have one cold front already passing through the area. You see a few clouds with that. Another one dropping through the upper Midwest will be in here this afternoon. So it's going to be a blustery day today. Winds by this afternoon approaching 40 miles per hour and mostly sunny skies. We'll see some clouds this morning, some more clouds this afternoon, but we'll see plenty of sun. But you know, we've been talking about the dry weather. It's been over three weeks, 23 days since we've had any measurable rain in Moline, about two weeks for measurable rain in Davenport. You were lucky you got about a half inch there at the end of September, but still very dry conditions. So if you have to do some burning, hopefully you can put it off for a few more days because the winds are going to be rather strong not only today but tomorrow and Wednesday. You were saying a little bit uh, earlier in the show that even if the winds were pretty light today you'd still be concerned about the dryness but the fact that they're going to be so bad you know 40 miles an hour makes it really even worse out there. Yeah because there are some uh, very dry grasses out across the area and you know only, it only takes one spark one little fire with these winds this strong to just uh, spread it you know we hear about those fires out west in mm -hmm. California but that can happen here too. All right, thanks, Anthony. Mm -hmm. Something to keep in mind for sure. Well, it's an important part of wildlife care you may have never considered before. Plus, the people risking their lives to get it done. We've got that story next.
Stay with us. The time now is 6.10. You're watching Local 4 News this morning. WHBF is local for you. With Chris Langlois, Emily Scarlett, and meteorologist Anthony Peoples. This is Local 4 News this morning in high definition.